Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds. Thank God we made it to Friday. So the weather is looking absolutely perfect for some Friday night lights tonight, my guy. And this is the final game of the regular season. Now there's the key. Regular season. Does it mean the season's over? Hardly. It's the start, of, or actually the beginning, of the new season, which, of course, is districts and the playoffs. The difference is one game, one loss. You gone. Sayonara. You're out of there. So that all begins next week. This is the final game of the regular season. There are some pretty good matchups, but in most cases, Mike, the district rankings, and that's how they do these teams in the district, and it doesn't have anything to do with conferences. It's the class that you fall into, 6 5 4 3 2, 1, whatever the case might be. And the rankings are made to seed the teams, and the seeded teams stay at home when they play. There's the key right there. Well, that all begins next week. That's week 10. That used to be the final week, but now it's the start of district play. One more, half the field will be out of there for Friday night. Oh, yeah. They'll be playing basketball or wrestling or something Moving else. Moving on to the next thing. <laughs> but the good teams are going to stay in. It should be very interesting. Uh, what? Do you, who do you like going into this right now? Nixa. Yeah? Are they the dog? They're a very, very good football team. They're a class six. Kickapoo is a class six. That's my people. Ozark is a class six. Mm-hmm. Waynesville is six. Joplin, six. They are the only six teams that we have here. The rest are class five and four and three and so forth down the line. That may change all. It, it, it has to do with the enrollment in school, mm-hmm. but that all may change in another year or two. Well, we'll see. Good luck, kids, and uh, give them hell on the field tonight. We do have three homecoming football games in the state. Where are they at? They are here in town, one of them. That's at Plaster Sports Complex, homecoming at Missouri State. And Murray State, out of Murray, Kentucky, comes in here to play the Murray State Racers. They are better than Western Illinois, but not a whole lot. The Bears should be able to get a win in this one and thrill the crowd because Missouri State can score. And that would be very good for a Missouri State football team that is young and coming on. That's the homecoming game here. There's also a homecoming game in Nixa. That's where Evangel plays their home games. And Evangel's undefeated. And their homecoming opponent is Friends University. You're familiar with them? I, I always thought, thought you were talking about the TV show. <laughs> It almost <laughs> looks like that. Like Evangelist versus Friends. It's a TV show now? <laughs> no, wrong Friends. Friends University's in Wichita, a, a historic old college, and indeed their football team is pretty good. Evangel will play them at 3 o'clock tomorrow. That's Evangel's homecoming. And up in Columbia, it's the University of Missouri's homecoming as well, and they will play South Carolina. And Missouri is a big favorite in this one over the South Carolina Gamecocks. Can't sit on your laurels. Missouri's pretty good, but hey, you've got to take care of business. So we have three key games going on. We do, and we have some really, really, really good college football games tomorrow. For example, Penn State, Ohio State kick things off, and I think that's the one you need to wake up for, get your coffee, and watch. That is a very big game. Penn State, Ohio State playing at Ohio Stadium, Columbus. The crowd will be reduced to about 106,000. That's about all the who show up for this one. And they will be loud. The Nittany Lions, where they play at Beaver Stadium in State College, Pennsylvania, they play in a stadium that's 106,000. So they're perfectly accustomed to loud crowds. Good, good, solid matchup. Ohio State is a slight favorite. Don't sell Penn State short. They're both undefeated. Michigan, Michigan State, Great interstate rivalry, but Michigan State is way down. Yeah, it should be, and Michigan be is pretty good, except they're now under investigation again. Mm. Oh, come on. What is going on? Tennessee, Alabama, and Tuscaloosa ought to be a dandy. Bama is favored. Texas, University of Texas, plays Houston. And you say, wait a minute. Texas and Houston? They're not in the same conference. They are this year. Houston's Big 12 for the first year, and now the Longhorns go down the road from Austin to Houston to play down there, and Texas is a big favorite in that one. Central Florida is also a new team in the Big 12. They're playing Oklahoma in Norman, and Oklahoma's a big favorite. Utah, Southern Cal, and Los Angeles at the Coliseum. These are all big games across the country tomorrow. Should be big. Uh, Where's your upset coming? I'm, I'm going to say the upset comes with Penn State, Ohio State. I, I see the Nittany Lions going in there and 
perhaps clipping the Ohio State Buckeyes, but that's simply a guess anything can happen. My K-State Wildcats facing off TCU and another big 12 matchup, so a lot of fun. So uh, we had some more baseball action in the championship series last night. Who got the dub? Well, there were both games played uh, yesterday and both are today as well. In the National League, which was the first game, Arizona had to win. They had to beat Philadelphia. Can't go down 3-0 to the Phillies. And Arizona did win. Got a walk-off base hit in the last of the ninth inning by Kettle Marte. That drove home the winning run 2-1. Very well-pitched game by both teams. That's the one factor about Philadelphia. All of the all of the headlines have surrounded the offensive attack. Philadelphia's pitching is pretty good. So is Arizona's. And the Diamondbacks yesterday got a great Great pitching performance from Brandon Fott. The kid's name is P-F-A-A-T. It's pronounced Fott. Out of Bellarmine in Louisville. And uh, he pitched well. Got taken out in the seventh inning to the boos of the crowd. They had a shutout going. They're going to need him back. Well, they, <clears throat> they want, that's what they were doing, yeah. saving him for the future. Anyway, Arizona wins the game. Those teams play again tonight. Now, the Texas Rangers Astros. I love the media, and I'm being very facetious. They wrote off the world champion Astros after they lost the first two games in Houston. <laughs> wrong Not so fast. Houston's come back and won the next two up at Arlington in the, the Globe Life Stadium. Houston won yesterday 10-3 last night. That series tied 2-2. They play again this afternoon. Uh, just a side note, the band Creed was down there because uh, Kent Hire has like, become like one of the rallying cries yeah. of the Rangers. And they went to perform and that was the third game. <laughs> And someone got first comment said, if we lose tonight, we now know why. If we lose after leading the series two to nothing, we now know why. <laughs> uh, baseball is a very superstitious sport. All right. So speaking of baseball, we had uh, some baseball here in Springfield last night for a great cause. Crowd was a little over a thousand at Hammond's Field for Battle for Bill. And there were two games. One was in the afternoon at noon time and Baptist Bible College, which is a much improved program came on and beat Evangel 5-4. to four. Baptist Bible College is joining the NAIA next year. They play those teams anyway, so why not join them? BBC 5, Evangel 4 in the day game. Night game was the Bears and Drury, and this is the seventh time they've met in battle for Bell. And Missouri State's won all seven of the games. One last night, put it away with a two-run homer in the second inning and a five-run third inning, and Missouri State won 10-3. to That's really kind of the difference between a D1 and D2 ball club. Bears have the power. Both teams' pitching staffs struck out 11 batters. Bears pitchers had 11 Drury strikeouts. Drury's pitchers had 11 Bears strikeouts. But the Bears had the big shots. The two, the two home runs and the second one was a bomb. 10 to 3, Missouri State wins it. So, Battle for Bell, a success, and proceeds, the bulk of them go to the ALS Foundation at Cox, uh, in Cox Health Systems. Glad a thousand people came out, and I'm glad they were able to raise some money for that. Because that's what it's all about at you, the end of the day. Beautiful night, too. For yeah, oh my goodness gracious, it was a beautiful night. All right, and it's going to be a beautiful day at Arrowhead Stadium. This Sunday afternoon when the Chiefs take on the hated Los Angeles Chargers, AFC West Showdown, Ned Talk starts at 1. KC is a very big favorite in this one against the Chargers ball club. Kansas City has a hex over them. I think this is a four-year winning streak they have after Los Angeles came back and won one of them. But be that as it may, Ned Talk does start at 1 o'clock. The Chiefs pregame show begins at 2, and then the game is a little after 3 o'clock. It's a late afternoon game. Should be a wonderful afternoon up in Kansas City at Arrowhead. And the Chiefs go in as a favorite. Chiefs are pretty good, folks. Let's, Let's face it. Lost that first game and haven't lost since. Fingers crossed. It's Red Friday. Go Chiefs. Ned, you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you on Monday.